one of the verses of the Guru Puja in the section reviewing the um, stages of the path that has to do with generosity reads, inspire me to perfect far-reaching generosity through the instruction for enhancing the mind that gives without attachment, transforming my body, virtue, <coughs> wealth, um, and three times collection of virtue into whatever each being desires. And I find this to be such a beautiful aspiration. So in trying to develop my practice of generosity, I have noticed that there are two components that require equal attention. Uh, one of those components has to do with how we receive the generosity of others and also how we give from ourselves, how we uh, become generous and kind and giving. So receiving involves being graceful and skillful about receiving, but giving also involves being graceful and skillful. In my mind, these two components of receiving and giving are uh, very closely related and influence one another. My theory is that when we have difficulty in receiving, we also have difficulty in giving. So you can check with yourself and with your own experience to see if that's true for you and if you can find instances when that's the case. So I'd, um, I, I've noticed in my practice that that certainly is the case for me. When I have difficulty receiving, then I also have difficulty giving. And I want to give some examples of my personal experience and maybe go into some of the reasons I've noticed of why that might be the case. And um, I chose this particular topic because of something that happened this morning, although the idea had been germinating in my mind for a while. Something happened this morning that sort of made this whole topic more alive for me. And that had to do with receiving the kindness and generosity of a member of the community, which instead of eliciting gratitude and um, happiness from my mind, it actually resulted in an angry explosion. <laughs> yes, and so why? Why uh, did that happen? Well, um, I think it's because I did not have enough self-confidence to accept the help that was being given. I was not open to receiving that kindness. And instead, I started to um, uh, um, I started to um, impute motivations and intentions on that other person, such as, well, she did this because she thought I was incapable of doing it, because she didn't trust my ability to come through because basically I'm useless, nobody can rely on me, and this is just another show of, of that. And so, of course, making her gesture of kindness as a um, show of my own ineptitude got me into a pretty good rage. <laughs> In addition, I started to think that this person was arrogant and minimizing my contributions. All of this, all of this going on in my, in my mind when a simple thank you would have sufficed. <laughs> and perhaps a bit of clarification, but certainly not the big explosion that actually took place. Therefore, I think that when accepting the generosity of others, that it requires us to have certain inner strength and confidence in the knowledge that um, it, it comes as kindness from the other person and it has nothing to do with me. I don't have to make that gesture about me. And further, I don't have to impute motivations or intentions on the other person. However, what happens in my mind is that I seem to correlate 
their receiving of generosity as somehow showing or indicating my own deficiency or my own neediness, my own defectiveness, my own less than status. And just most recently realizing how distorted those conceptions really are have nothing to do with the practice of generosity and have nothing to do with uh, who we are, the giver and the receiver. But this does shed some light about what attitudes are buried within me in terms of thinking that generosity can only be practiced in relation to someone who's needy or someone who is somehow deficient or defective or lacking. Whereas indeed the practice of generosity as envisioned by bodhisattvas is completely different. That's not definitely the kind of attitude that they bring to this practice. Their attitude, I think, as I, as I read the teachings and the scripture, is an attitude of equanimity, of really deeply understanding that all of us at the deepest level want happiness and not suffering. And therefore, it makes sense for me as a person to be able to contribute to that in others because ultimately they contribute to that in myself. So it is actually beautiful and spiritually supportive when we can uh, uh, practice both receiving and giving from the point of view of interdependence. And also from the point of view of lessening our discrimination of a self and another. Because the stronger that we discriminate a self and the other, the more burdened we're going to feel as we try to, in fact, practice generosity. Because anything, activity done in relationship to the other becomes an activity not done in relationship to ourselves. So we fall, I think, into this dichotomy of win and lose. If I give somebody else wins and I lose, at least those seem to be some of the attitudes that appear in my mind as I was trying to wade through, um, through this practice. And also the scriptures um, encourage us to see the whole, not just the interdependence of the giver and the receiver, but also the whole emptiness of that three spheres. And I think this is so because these attitudes are much more open and realistic and help us overcome the distorted attitudes that um, I know in my case I carry with me. Now, those are examples of how we receive with an afflicted mind, but how about examples of how we give with an afflicted mind? And I have all of them as well. I've had practice all of those in the past. But um, have you ever been kind to someone only to remind them a billion times about what you've done for them in the past? Do you remember last month how I did your dishes? Or remember last month how I signed on this chore rota so that you could have some time off? I know I have. Can you remember a time when you've actually helped someone expecting in the back of your mind a little bit of a reward afterwards? Maybe they can do the same thing for you. Or how about when you agreed to help someone and ruminated in your mind with anger about all the things that you had to do for this person? I know I've done that. Or the times when we felt magnanimous and powerful because we were in a position to give help to others. I've done that too. So I have discovered that when I have these attitudes about giving in my mind, they are really an obstacle for my receiving. Because then I impute all those intentions, motivations, and attitudes to the folks that are being kind to me. And so creates a big barrier for me to receive their kindness and their help. Um, after all, who would want to accept anything coming from an, an attitude that's kind of so distorted? That's not to say that we have to be perfect in order to practice generosity. But it is um, 
sort of um, an encouragement for us to look deeply at our mind of what's present as we are trying to um, do this practice. Um, how do we overcome these things? I think by, um, first of all, being aware of what attitudes are there, and also by generating some humility, both as we give and we receive, and being able to be vulnerable at that moment. I find that that moment is fraught with great vulnerability for both parties, and is really an opportunity for openness and connection. And to see the giving and the receiving not as a transaction, not as a um, win-lose or zero-sum game, but rather as a really enriching spiritual practice that um, supports our humanity or reinforces our humanity and our interdependence. When we are generous, everybody wins. <laughs>